My name is Tommy Lamont. I'm a principal consultant in the security and risk practice at Third Era. Um, so I'll be taking us through a brief demo here, just kind of an example of what this might look like. Of course, as part of this offering, we work with you to build out, you know, what exactly uh, makes sense for you in terms of integrations, statistics, everything like that. But I'll take you through a, a quick demo here. Um, I'll just give, I, I'm not sure everyone's experience, or actually I saw based on the poll, some of you don't have security incident response yet. So I'll sprinkle in a couple of general security incident uh, facts about ServiceNow as I go through for those of you that may not yet be familiar with it. So starting out here, we are on the new security incident response workspace. Uh, so even those of you that do own security incident, this may look new to you. ServiceNow released this back in, I think, beginning of February. Um, and it's actually, I, I really like it. It's a great improvement on the workspace for security incident. So I'll be demoing through here. The first thing we can see in this workspace is just a quick overview. So I'm basically impersonating as a security analyst here. So I open up my security uh, incident workspace and I can see what's assigned to me, a list by priority, by state, category, um, SLAs, so I'm doing pretty bad, breaching lots of SLAs, a lot of good information like that. So again, this is just a default feature of the, the new workspace, but with security incident, um, you know, you really wanna get that information in front of people as easy as possible. Um, so kind of the goal of security incident in service now in general, not just phishing, is to centralize your work, centralize your alerts. So, you know, in this example, phishing, but you're also probably gonna integrate your SIM alerts, um, alerts from other tools. Again, get everything working out of the same tool. Um, automate the prioritization and assignment. So, you know, me as the security analyst logged in here, I can see what's assigned to me. I can see priority state of those incidents. And again, I'm not pulling things out of an inbox and copying and pasting things into a tool to create my security incident. And from there, we like to, what you do is standardize the response process, right? So that's where attentive kind of comes in with phishing. But in this case, we, or, or in all cases, you, you want to work towards that, having repeatable playbooks. So whether it's a fully automated playbook, like with attentive, or maybe even a fully manual playbook where you're just sending tasks to other teams, centralizing and standardizing that in service now is key. Um, the really nice thing about doing this in ServiceNow is, uh, you know, if you're an existing ServiceNow customer, most of your IT teams are probably already working in the tool. So um, maybe in some playbook, uh, like a malware playbook, uh, we have a manual step to reach out to the endpoint team, like I said, might be something you all are doing today. Uh, we can send a task right over that team. They get it right in ServiceNow and can work it, and the security analyst can manage that all out of one place. Again, all of that is just general kind of baseline security incident functionality. And of course, then we can track SLAs, metrics, all that good stuff against it. So now getting more into some uh, phishing specifics. So I uh, have a simulated phishing attack here that I reported earlier today, or, or I'll say got a report of. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up that incident. All right, so as that's opening up, I can see right away, I have a phishing incident, priority of critical, and I can even see the, the email body right here in this little window if I care to review that. So you know, it looks like a you know, normal phishing email, asking for some gift cards. I'm, I'm sure we've all been getting emails and texts like that all the time. Key here is uh, me as the analyst, I haven't done any manual work yet, right? I didn't copy and paste that email into a tool, anything like that. This is the first time I'm looking at this. And right away, I see the body of the email, but I also see some other really interesting facts. I see um, you know, what assets might be impact here. By mapping uh, our CMDB and asset management, uh, if we're using that, we can map that to users, map that to who's reporting the emails, get an idea of what assets might be impact. Um, I can see uh, my affected users by criticality. So if we're ranking our criticality of users, you know, maybe we want to raise up the flag when we, our CIO is being impact or CEO. Um, we can use that to even automatically increase the risk score on the security incident. Um, and then the other piece we get in here is where our integration starts to come into play. So this is where we're really you know, sitting down with you, building out that process for what sources of information are gonna help us uh, resolve this incident faster. A primary one of those in our first kind of analysis state is usually uh, observable enrichment. So I can see right here, um, just right away, I can see we had four malicious observables that were involved in this that we had results for. And I can see some of the different types of observables here in terms of file hashes, emails, ID, email addresses, IP addresses, um, all that kind of information. So like I said, right away, this is the first time I'm looking at this email. I didn't spend you know hours uh, going through, figuring out if it's part of a campaign, that type of thing. I'm presented with all this information. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to my investigation tab where I can kind of dive down into the details a little bit more just to show you kind of what was going on to get us some of those overviews. So um, right away, I can see some associated observables. So this is where that, that nice uh, pie chart came from of what's malicious and what's not. I um, can scroll through those. I can see this malicious IP address. This has actually been seen in eight other incidents. 
So that's really cool because it starts to give you insight into, um, you know, are we seeing attacks maybe that aren't even just phishing, but from, from a specific source or, or we're trying to drive our users to a specific site um, and, and get an idea of kind of scope there. And even if we've done something before with that observable to manage it. Um, like I said, I can see my configuration items that are in, involved. So, you know, whose laptops uh, might have been affected and who they were assigned to. Um, my users involved. So you'll notice uh, this is not just one user that reported this email, right? I've got five different people here. Uh, where we get that from is our associated dish emails. So um, what's cool here is, like I said, this is that kind of really simple, but also really valuable step of aggregating our emails, right? So five different people got the same phishing email um, where you automatically aggregated them up into this one security incident. And that's where people are seeing, you know, just that very first step, huge savings. Um, by not needing to go through and, you know, potentially duplicate work. You know, if we have a big team of analysts, we might have two, three people all working phishing emails and maybe they're working ones that are part of the same campaign and duplicating a lot of work. This really enables us to, um, you know, work these things holistically and get them aggregated automatically as quickly as possible. Again, without ever having seen this, I already know there are five emails in one campaign so that all happened automatically. Um, like I said, this example, we do have the same subject in sender, but most of the time, uh, senders are getting a lot smart than, smarter than that now, right? They're going to vary all of this information slightly, uh, maybe we still be driving you to the same malicious place, but um, we set up some, some logic to help take it the next step beyond this subject in sender aggregation, look at things like observables and email bodies, um, that type of thing. As we found most of our, uh, most of these implementations we've done, that's a, a key aspect that our customers are looking at. So just to show a little bit more what's under the hood here. So our related records, um, this is where, you know, really a lot of the stuff we integrate starts to come into, right? So we're able to automatically do a lot of this stuff, like assign our risk score, prioritize, but if we wanted to see more details on like our observable enrichment, um, things in endpoint detection, like what processes might be running in tools, we can see all that here. Um, our configuration items, um, related users is pretty cool as well. We can see um, not just from this phishing campaign, but maybe other users that are getting the same link sent to them. So again, giving you more than just like a one-off working each incident, uh, kind of giving you that context of everything being in the ServiceNow platform and what that might look like. All right, so this is kind of our base analysis phase complete, right? We've uh, done our investigation, found we do in fact have malicious observables. Um, this is a real phishing attack. We need to go do something. I'm gonna go over to my response tasks here. Um, everything we're, we're doing, we're actually tracking as um, tasks, even if they're automated. So again, we know what's happening. We can track kind of our quantities, of how many times we're doing things. So we started out um, acknowledging the phishing receipt. So thanking the user, let them know we're investigating, send out that notification automatically. Um, we're gonna get our observable information. So that might be a sandbox tool, that might be multiple enrichment tools. Um, it actually doesn't matter to the analyst necessarily uh, how many tools it is because we're gonna pull it back and centralize it and aggregate that data. So they can dig down on those related records and see each individual, individual integration, but also they can just see the information they need like are there malicious things in this email. From there, we're going to um, take a look at our first manual task here. So this does align kind of the workflow I showed. Um, I'll open up our task. Basically, this is just saying uh, review the threat artifacts and proceed to containment. It's just looking for confirmation that, yep, analysts have set eyes on this. We agree everything worked as, as uh, expected and it was in fact malicious. Go ahead and close that. Um, that task has been updated and some things are gonna happen in the background, which are gonna take a minute here. Um, and we can see uh, some tasks are starting to pop up. So because we know it was bad and we wanna to proceed to containment, we're gonna run our email search, probably run a deletion on those. Uh, we're gonna run a citing search, see you know, where else in, in our environment is this being seen? You know, is there an IP that now we're seeing hitting other devices that our SIMs picking up um, from an integration to that? And we're gonna be running through all of these um, various uh, steps of the integration, uh, like integrations, I should say, multiple. So our citing search, our email search, blocking observables. So blocking things we said were bad. So we can automatically go say, all right, we saw all these malicious observables, make sure those are blocked in the firewall. Someone clicks the link, they're not gonna be able to get to it um, or maybe blocked in our VPN. And all that's gonna run through and take the incident through to the uh, containment state. And like I said, let's just give this a refresh. Um, so we can kind of see all of that happening down the, the track here as it's um, the automated process is happening. 
Um, obviously now this is just a, a demo, so just doing a couple things. So um, this can take real time, right? If we're, we have um, thousands of emails to delete, thousands of zero rules to block, there might be a little bit delay. So you're probably not gonna sit here and watch it like we're doing here. But I kind of just sped this along for demo purposes so we can see what's happening. Um, and really that delay is just based on, you know, based on your tool set you're using, um, how long the tools are gonna take to go do their actions like, like citing search and blocking intervals, that type of thing. Um, we can see our incident here moving along its states now. So we went from our contained state to eradicate automatically. Um, and we'll see here in a second, we're gonna move to our review state and our playbook has now completed. So all those steps I kind of showed on the workflow stage are now done, we're in our review state. Um, and again, me as the analyst, I just kind of reviewed everything, closed out the task, confirmed, um, set some human eyes to confirm what we wanted to happen and push that automation forward. And now uh, we did choose in this case to have a post-instant review process. So I can come in here, um, see my post-instant review. Um, we have an assessment ready to take. Uh, like I said, this is some of the um, base service now functionality, but I, I thought I'd show this as well for anyone not familiar with security incident. Um, we can have these assessments as part of any incident type um, you know, commonly, if you have a critical incident, in this case, maybe a huge campaign, you want to collect some information from your analysts, figure out how it went. We can do that using this assessment process. And what all the assessment is, is basically a, a way to collect some information from users. So whether you're using ServiceNow or doing things manually, you're probably doing this in some fashion. A lot of people do it in, you know, a spreadsheet or even just emails right now. But we're going to collect all this information that we need a person to, to talk about directly. Um, I made these not required just for the purposes of speeding this demo along. I'll just go ahead and submit as if I had done all of that. So as the analyst now, I completed my review. We can serve a multiple analyst if we had multiple involved. I'll just do that one. And I can now close the incident out. Uh, as I do that, I might need to serve, save a report on this. So you know, in addition to that assessment, we want a post-incident uh, kind of after action report. Uh, lots of people might, might attach those to their incidents or maybe you need to report that up to management on how things went. Uh, so just to give you a preview of what that might look like, again, this is another out of the box uh, functionality that by driving all of this work through service now, you're going to be able to have a much better view into like wh what happened throughout that whole phishing process. So in this example, um, you know, this was our whole phishing workflow completed. We can generate a post incident review report. Um, and what that is, is actually a configurable, P configurable PDF that gives you some, some quick information on things like time to identify, time to resolve, um, indicators. So this is where, you know, that benefit of having everything in service now driving those integrations can really tell us what malicious stuff was going on here, what tasks were there, good information like that. So from there, you can, you can, you know, save that out, do whatever you want with it, close out the incident. So that kind of takes us through what a, an example of, you know, end state of attentive might look like fully automating the process um, and where we get our customers when, uh, you know, they're really getting them out of those manual steps. Uh, from there, besides just like the day-to-day -day working the incidents, um, obviously, like I said, metrics is a big thing to care about. So I'm just going to show you a quick example dashboard here um, with some uh, reports we typically create for our, our uh, customers. Uh, this is one of the out-of-the-box dashboards, just by default, it brings us here, analyst overview. So um, again, if you're not familiar with the new workspace, this is a pretty nice dashboard that comes in it. I'm just going to switch over to our phishing dashboard that we created. Um, and the idea is here, a lot of customers, you know, especially if phishing is a big problem, like, uh, you know, universities, for instance, where you might be working through 20,000 uh, reports or, or, or however many users per day, you want to see, you know, what's going on, get a good idea of trends. Um, so these are some of the statistics you might care about in regards to phishing uh, specifically. Um, of course, you can view all these in a lot of out of the box dashboards for your whole security incident process. These are some of the phish specific ones. Um, so some examples, we see people frequently using, um, you know, critical user phishing emails. So these are, you know, maybe our C-suite or executives that are reporting phishing emails. How many of those are open? You know, we want to track those a little closer probably as there might be higher impact of something. They do click something. Uh, total open phishing security incidents, active campaigns. So not just open incidents, not just open reports, but how many campaigns are actually going on. Um, and then just the trends of report over time. So it can be nice to see kind of, you know, day over day or month over month or quarter over quarter even, how many phishing reports are we seeing? Um, so we, we uh, typically put together some nice dashboards like this and of course work with you. Again, we're not just, like I said, installing some pre-built pre code and saying good luck. Uh, as part of the attentive offering, attentive process, we're gonna walk through 
uh, reports, what metrics you care about, and make sure you're really getting that information you need out of the system and not not needing to go back and you know export things to Excel and do do uh, pivot charts, things of that nature, right? We want all that data right in front of you uh, that you may need to review. So with that, uh, that is all I had for my demonstration. Thanks for taking the time to watch the demo today. Be sure to check out Attentive on the ServiceNow store. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us using the information below. Uh, we also have a lot of other great insights and demos about ServiceNow on the Third Era YouTube channel.